Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. I hope you'll stick around, see who I'm going to be inspired by this week and find out how you can go to their channel and find out how I inspired them. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. It is Saturday, which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collab here on my channel. If you're new to Inspired Saturdays, I'll tell you a little bit about it before we get started. I like to stop by most Saturdays and team up with another crafty YouTuber. We each create a video where we make a new project that is in some way based upon a project by the other collaborator. One of the fun things about this collaboration is that whatever we take as inspiration is a complete surprise to the other person. For today, I am collaborating with Debbie of Project 39 Mini Albums. If you're not already subscribed to her, her channel is linked below. She creates fabulous mini albums and I hope that you'll go check out some of her other videos once you check out her video for today. Well, if you know me, you know I'm not really a mini album maker, I'm more of a card maker. So I will be taking inspiration from a video that she shared recently. In this video, she gave us a look at some mini albums she created using cut aparts from Disney themed collections. Well, I have had this Disney themed paper and this Disney themed die and stamp set that I haven't created with yet, so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. I will also be using the latest sheet load of cards, the September 2020, which is a special slimline edition. Now don't forget, when you're done with my video today, I have Debbie's video linked in the top of the description box below, so make sure to go see how I inspired her. If you're a crafty YouTuber who would like to join me for an Inspired Saturdays, I will link the video below where I give more details, including the link to the application. I am pretty full up for the rest of the year, but there are some spots left, so I would love it if you would consider that. Once I start the process, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty. I'm going to start today's cards by doing all of the cutting. The first thing I do is stack the two pattern paper pieces on top of each other and I cut those per the instructions in the sheet load of cards printable. Because you can download the printable for free if you're a subscriber to my channel, I won't be going over a lot of the dimensions during this video. If you do want to find out how to download the printable, I will link the debut video in the description box below, and if you watch that, I will tell you how to download the file. Once I had the pattern paper cut, I brought in six pieces of white cardstock, and I cut these down so one piece would end up being my slimline card base, and then the second piece would end up being where I stamp my sentiment and image later. And then finally for the cutting, I got out two pieces of coordinating red cardstock and I cut these each into six pieces per the instructions on the printable. Because I do use a heavyweight white for these card bases, I got out my score it tool and scored the card bases in half so when I folded them, the edges would not crack. Once I had all of the card bases scored and folded, I brought in the larger pieces of pattern paper. I added adhesive to the back of each one of those and these got placed on the card fronts. Because of the sizing, it does cover the card fronts completely. Now 
Next, I got out my Diane stamp set from Echo Park along with my Misty. Because I will be mass producing and needing to stamp everything six times, the Misty is a great way to set the stamps up once and then I can just keep stamping. I chose the castle and the firework from the stamp set and I got those placed on the little white piece of cardstock where I wanted them. The castle got inked up with a yellow and the firework got inked up with a red. Once I was happy with the placement, I then just stamped the remaining five pieces of white cardstock with the castle and the firework image. Once the little icons were all stamped, it was time to get my sentiment added. From the stamp set, I chose the one that reads, Always believe something wonderful is about to happen. I thought that was the best sentiment from the set for a card front. Once again, I'll be using the Misty so I can place my stamp once and then stamp all six pieces. This got inked up in VersaFine Onyx Black ink and then stamped onto my sentiment piece. I finished up all six of those before moving on. Now that all of the parts were done, I could finish putting the cards together. I got out my red cardstock as well as the pattern pieces that I cut previously, and I added one of the pattern paper pieces to the bottom of my red mat and the sentiment piece to the top. You'll notice that there is a gap between these pieces, so that's why I have that little piece of red cardstock to cover that up. You can decorate this if you want to later on. Once all those pieces were ready, it was time to bring back in my card bases and get these added centered to the front of it. I had thought about doing some foam adhesive to add this layer, but I decided that I wanted to keep it nice and flat for mailing. You can mail a slimline card for a standard first class stamp as long as it's not too bulky. And now to finish these cards off, I just needed a little bit of sparkle. I got out some clear gems and added three to the front of each of the cards. One went in the center of the firework, one went to the left of the castle, and then I put one down on that red cardstock centerpiece. And here is a close up look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit Debbie's link. It's at the top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.